Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for putting me to sleep last night and giving me a rest and waking me up this morning, God. Thank you, God, for all the rest you give me, God. Thank you, God, that it's been a blessed weekend, Lord. Thank you that you've been, it's been a blessed week, Lord, and thank you that you continue to show me favor, Lord God. God, I pray you will show all your children favor, Lord God, so they are, they are testify and tell somebody about the favor you've shown them, God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you've been so, so good, Lord God, as, as the song says, and I'm going to, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I'm going to talk about your goodness, Lord. Help us all to bear witness of your goodness, of your favor, of your grace, of your mercy, of your love, Lord God. This morning, open our ears and our hearts. Allow us to receive what you're saying, God. Allow us to willingly obey it and accept it. God, use me as the vessel that you put the word in. And use me as the messenger who delivers that word, God. Above all things, Lord, let your will be done. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right, all right, all right. Today's scripture is coming from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. <clears throat> now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene, and the other mirror came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he has said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell the disciples, 
Behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brother to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. May the Lord bless the readers, the hearers, and especially the doers of his holy word. Um, all right. He is alive. Um, my daughter asked me, um, uh, is Jesus dead? And another question was, why can't we see Jesus if he is alive? I told her what I know to be true. And what I believe, I told her the only thing I could tell her, what I know to be true. Now, this is what, you know, that's all the thing I could tell her. I said, uh, Jesus rose from the dead. And now he is at the right hand of the father in heaven. That's the only thing I can't tell her. Cause that's what the, 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 the scripture bear witness of Jesus rose from the grave. And now he's at the right hand of the father. That's all you can tell somebody. Now you can tell them, uh, uh um, why, why you believe that, how you believe that. And you can give other details to, to your faith, you know what I'm saying? To, to your belief in God. That could that could persuade or convince them to to believe or think or feel or know the same. Um, our boy witness of what I believe and know, and one day she will be a witness to what she believes and knows. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were instructed to tell the disciples what they had seen. They uh they weren't instructed to go and preach or teach, but to go and be a witness. Now, I mean, pause for a minute right there, because a lot of people, there's, this is another part where people are divided in the body of Christ. <laughs> um, Mary and Magdalene and, Mary, and the other Mary, Jesus didn't tell them to go preach. The angel, the angel now I looked there, they get, they were, they were, <clears throat> they were instructed by two, on two occasions. They were instructed to go and tell the disciples by the angel that was at the tomb. Then they saw Jesus. And he said, "Go tell them where I'm at." You know what I'm saying? He, that was that what Jesus said. Go tell them. Go tell them where to go to, and so they want to meet me. And so uh, they weren't instructed to preach or teach. They were just they were just told to 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 be a witness, to bear witness of what had took place. As I said, this caused division because some people say that oh, Mary Mary Magdalene and uh, the other Mary were the first uh, preachers or the first evangelists or the first first teachers or whatever, but that's exceeding the scripture. Paul said, "Do not uh, go. Do not uh, go beyond what is written in the scriptures." There's you can't you can't take that part from that right there. You know what I'm saying? If I tell you, "Amen," go over there and, uh, to that church and tell them that you just saw Jesus, and you ain't going to preach. You're going to be a witness. And so I have to say that and clear that right there because. That's how, that's where I stand. I stand with what the scriptures say, and there's no other places in here where it was so that Mary was a preacher or a teacher, or or the other Mary or Mary Magdalene. They weren't a preach, preachers or teachers. I don't see any scripture to support that. If you can find a scripture that supports what others say about it, because it can't be, it can be believed. What others what others believe about it? Show me that scripture. What makes you believe that that uh? That, that Jesus didn't say what he said right here. He, and he told them to go preach or go and teach somebody. Uh, in fact, uh, they weren't even, they weren't, you know what I'm saying? The women weren't allowed to, to teach then, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's another reason that shows you that they weren't the first teachers or they weren't the first pastors or preachers. Um, and I, and, and it's a, this is a two-part thing. I want to say that part right there to clear the air on how I feel about that. But I also want to take say that part to say this. All of us are called to be a witness for the Lord Jesus, whether we preach or teach the gospel or not. See, when you when you see them going and telling and being a witness and, and you say, well, they was a preacher or a teacher or a pastor, then you might think that you have to be a preacher or teacher or pastor to, to share the gospel. But you don't. You can be like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. You can just go tell somebody, look, I believe this. This is what Jesus did. And this is what somebody told me. You know, you don't have to say this is what somebody told me. You can now you can find it in the scripture and read it for yourself. 
see, they didn't have the they didn't have the um, the New Testament to tell somebody what happened. All they had was what they had seen and what they had heard. You can see it, hear it, and read it for yourself, and then share it. That's not being a preacher. That's not being a teacher. <laughs> that's not being a pastor. All that's doing is being a witness. All of us, everybody, no matter what you do, you are called to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't have to be called to be a preacher, teacher, or pastor, but you are called to be a witness. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, uh, 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 let your light so shine that people see your good deeds, your good works, and they glorify God. And I keep telling you, the only way you glorify God is if you, if on, you're glorifying God is bringing people to him. Not the only way. Glorifying God is bringing people to him so that we all can praise and worship him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so, there, uh, so therefore, there has to be some reason for your faith in Jesus. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to say this is impossible, but I, but I am going to say this sort of in a mm, hesitant way. But you didn't just wake up one day and start believing in Jesus, did you? Now, if you did, I didn't say there's anything wrong with that. But did you just one day wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to believe in Jesus. Never heard about him. Never prayed. Never witnessed. Never you know. Never witnessed anything. Never heard the scriptures. Never been preached to, never nobody ever taught you anything, or a, a, a shepherd never brought you into his church and sh uh, shared the good news. And you just all of a sudden, Jesus, you know, I don't think that, you know what I'm saying? Now, if you saw something in a dream, that's different. You know, if, if, if Jesus revealed himself to you in a dream, you still saw something. Now, don't go around trying to talk about what color he was and who he looked like. And usually, when he reveals a dream to us, it's, some, it's someone or something that we're comfortable with so that we can look at what's going on. I think that now. I, I can't, I'm not a dream interpreter. I had a dream the other night and then another dream the next night pertains to something like that. And I have no clue what the stuff means. But I do know three months ago when I had a dream about something that it came true like this next day. It, it, it The interpretation came came true the next day, even though I didn't know what it meant when I had it. Afterwards, I still didn't know, but somebody told me later that if that's in your dream, this is what this means. And I said, oh, that's why that happened. But anyway, what I'm saying is there there must be a reason for your faith in Jesus Christ. Whether it was revealed to you and Jesus was revealed to you in your dream, whether somebody preached it or taught it to you, whether you read it, and, and whatever way God gave you revelation that Jesus is alive, that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the grave and that he he wants you to come to him for salvation and that there is no other way but him there was a reason there some of us have more than one reason i got i think about two reasons are these gonna stay genuine and i'm thinking about somebody say they they've started believing you know after they had the baby you know what i'm saying i'm like hey i'm thinking if that works for you that works for you my reasons will always be because jesus saved me from that case, and because Jesus saved me from my sin, from from my sin, period, from the penalty of my sin, from the power of my sin, from the side effects of my sin, and all that stuff, he saved me from sin, and he saved me from prison. You know, that's what, I did, and, and, and all the things that came with sin. He saved me from everything that came with sin. There were a lot of other things, but I just have to sum it all up and say sin, because sin came with came with all type of uh, everything. Everything. I ain't gonna. I'm not about to name things, but sin brought a lot of weight, and Jesus saved me from that weight. And so that's that's my reason. I'm uh, I'm sometimes I'm shameful of that other reason. You know what I'm saying? But 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 I, I share I share the other reason, but sometimes I'm shameful of the other reason because it's shameful to be incarcerated for something of that nature. Back then, it was a prideful thing. People talk about how many bodies they had and how many people they shot, how many people they killed, and how many how much dope they sold, and how much money, how many robbers, and how much did we 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 bragged about those type of things, you know what I'm saying? But now it's 
later on, it's a shame. When you're in the Lord, it's a shameful thing to be associated with something like that, uh, to, to be to where you, you like that stuff at some point, you know? And so I, I sometimes I don't, I'm not so open about it. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the, the, uh, the environment, you know, uh, but we're all called to be a witness. I'm still going to be a witness. I'm going to still be a witness for the Lord. Why? Because Lord got, he stopped me from going to prison. I ain't got to get the specifics of it every single time, but I often can't get it out saying it, uh, uh, freestyling it verbally. I can give somebody a book, say, look, read this book and hear what the Lord did for me. Or look up this book, go get to download your free copy of the book or read it. If you want to buy it on Amazon or look on, uh, I think, Google Google Books, you can get you can get a couple of my books for free on Google Books. You sure can I have it up? I don't know if iPhone, if Apple got a, a app where you can put books on, but Google Books, or a couple of my books are just free. You just go download it. <laughs> But I'm always be a witness for the Lord, <clears throat> regardless of if I'm preaching or teaching or in a pastor position. And everybody's called to be a witness. <clears throat> there must be some reason for your faith. <clears throat> Peter tells us in First um, Peter chapter three, verse fifteen, he tells us he tells us that you have a reason give uh, to give your to give a defense. For why you have faith in Jesus, why you have hope in Jesus, when people ask, he says, I "Always be, said, always be ready to give a defense for the reason that you have hope in Jesus." When people ask, because people are going to ask, it might be a little child asking you, it might be a sibling asking you, it might be uh, one of your parents or uh, somebody older and outdoor, or it might be a stranger, or it might be somebody uh, you fill out an application for a job or applying for something in school or a position somewhere or anything somebody might ask you why are you wearing a jesus shirt why do you pray on your lunch break why do you have a bible in your bag ma'am sir why are you carrying that bag with you where it has a bible in it or why are you reading the bible out there in the lobby you know say they gonna if they're not a believer they might ask that if some if they are a believer they still might ask so you never know who um he, uh, I am going to that. It's Paul says, uh, sometimes we entertain angels and we think they're strangers, but I'm not going to get into that. I can't prove to you, but I've heard stories of people who talk to a person and did something. Then they go around and look around the corner and the person ain't even there. The person gone, vanished, thin air, you know what I'm saying? But it, it sometimes it might be angels of God seeing if you come in to bear witness, asking you a question, seeing if you're going to. Uh, 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 take heed to the opportunity and bear witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, also, uh, uh, here are some questions right here that I want you to consider. Keep this in mind. All of us must bear witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. What did you witness? What, what's your? I want to know what, what's your reason that you believe in Jesus? What's the reason that you came to Jesus? What did you witness? What do you believe think about this what do you witness what do you believe what happened to you what happened that made you believe and most importantly is it supported by scripture there's some there <clears throat> there's some stuff that might happen in your life might seem like it's miraculous or supernatural but it's still supported by scripture is uh, i tell you this and i stand on this right here everything in this life can be found in the scripture you can you can live your life by the word of God. I mean, when you need advice, when you need counseling, when you need a decision making tactics, when you need anything that you need, when you need finance, what to do with your finances, what to do about family, children, parenting, uh, uh, enemies, friends, strangers, church, any type of anything in this dealing with this life right here, you can find it in the scriptures. You, you don't need to go outside. Now, I say this, too. I said you can find it in those 66 books. You don't need the other books. The other books that say you can pay some money to wipe sins away. Or you can pray for somebody who's already dead and with God, and maybe they can be saved. I, if that stuff was taken out of the 66, that's why it was taken out, because it don't line up with the rest of the 66 books of the Bible. And there's a lot of other stuff, you know, but this I say you can find it in the 66 books of the Bible. 
If you can read and find it in somewhere else, as long as it don't lead you in a different direction from this, that's fine. If that's what you have to do. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to let you go. You don't have to be a pastor or a teacher to spread the gospel of salvation. If that, like I just asked you those questions. What you? What do you believe? What did you witness? What do you? How do you feel about Jesus? Is there scripture to support it? You don't need to be a preacher, a teacher, a pastor. You just like Mary Magdalene and and the other Mary were not a preacher, not a pastor, not a teacher. They were just witnesses for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, "Go." Um, the angel said, "Go tell them what you saw." Here at the tomb, and Jesus said, "Go tell them where I'm at." Go tell them to meet me in Galilee. That was his words. Go tell them to meet to meet me in Galilee, and and, then, and you and you will see me there. All of y'all gonna see me there in Galilee. I'm gonna be there. Then I'm gonna teach you and something and preach something to you and be your shepherd and your pastor. So you don't have to be a shepherd or a pastor or a preacher or a teacher to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> all you have to be, all you have to do is share your faith and be a witness for Jesus. That's all you have to do to spread the gospel. Share your faith. Share what happened to you. Share what you believe. Share what you've seen. Share how you interpret the scriptures. What somebody taught you or showed you or told you. And, 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 and tell people your story. Tell people your side of the story of how you came to Jesus Christ and, and how you used to be before Jesus Christ. And that's all it takes, man. You don't need a title or an office to do that. Jesus has called all of us to be a witness. Are you going to go and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ? Father God in heaven, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for calling us to be witnesses. God, thank you for calling some of us to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and, 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 and shepherds, Lord God, over your people, Lord God, teaching them, Lord pastors teaching them lord god your word lord god take away the, the divisive areas lord god take away the things that cause division in the body of christ lord god make it clear make it plain lord god so that we can all be on one accord and so that we can all spread the good news of salvation so that we can all win souls for your kingdom so that we can all let our lines our, our light shine lord god and people can see us god and they can glorify you lord god help us god to reach those who are who are still lost, who haven't come to you yet, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to reach them. Help us, God, be a, help us to be a witness, Lord, for you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Lord God. Whatever we're doing, Lord God, let us do it heartily as to you, Lord, and not trying to impress people, but instead trying to make you proud of us, God, so that you may say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, God, as we leave on this day, whatever we're doing, God, I pray you be with us, God. I pray that your grace will carry us to and fro, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Let all things be done according to your world, according to your, your will, according to your word, according to your ways, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. All right. All right. That's it for morning cup of Jesus. If the Lord is willing. I'm going to be right back here tomorrow morning around the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you. Through Christ, we're strengthened. Through Christ, we're strengthened.
Thank you.